Hey, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon to the East Coast. Welcome to Radio 5G. Michael Henry Dunn here with my esteemed co-host, Nancy L. Hopkins. How are you doing this morning, Nancy? Well, I'm doing okie dokie. Hey, we're in exciting times here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ridiculously exciting times. What the Chinese curse, right? May you live in interesting times. This is like, may you live in ridiculously interesting times. It's, uh, I can hardly keep up these days, you know what I mean? <clears throat> wow. So, um, we're going to cover 5G stuff. We're also going to cover, um, geopolitical stuff and skullduggery stuff and, uh, speculative stuff and what the unenlightened folk call conspiracy theory stuff. That's our usual Radio 5G agenda. So, uh, uh, you, Nancy, you've brought forward this uh, really interesting executive order from the President of the United States from uh, from April. Um, do you want to tell us about this? Um, you know, it has to do with executive order creates committee to replace Team Telecom review of foreign telecom investments. And And basically what I'm hearing from Nancy on this is that if we're interpreting this right, yeah, it's about Huawei, the Chinese 5G. It's about the likelihood that that's uh, a snooping apparatus uh, with God knows what else built into it. It's like, oh, here, it's one of our major foreign rivals and strategic uh, opponents. Uh, let us let us take care of your telecommunications for you. Anyway, um, do you want to tell us more about this? Um, Lieutenant Hopkins, are you there? Captain Hopkins. Captain Hopkins. <laughs> okay, you were brought in as a lieutenant, but but you uh, uh, left as the captain. Yeah, well, it, well, just a side note and show you, you know, what happens to people. The <laughs> the um, I, I left the active army. Now the active army is different than the reserves. Okay, you hear about the reserves right now, um, right? Okay, and you also hear about the National Guard. So the National Guard is a reserve organization to the active army, but it is in the jurisdiction, let's say, of the um, states. The governor is the one that would say, "Hey, we need you to do this," you know. So right. um, you've got National uh, National Guard and you've got Reserves. Active duty. Okay, so I went on active duty, and then when I got out of active duty, I went into the Reserves. Not the National Guard, uh -huh. but the Reserves. And so in the Reserves, I was in civil affairs, not electronic or intelligence. Because it was – you get – little units that are up here and there and you know, the one around me was a uh, uh, civil affairs and they they were an interesting organization because their responsibility is to go it's their military unit uh, you know like a reserve military unit but they're called into action anytime they have to interface with a civilian community which is virtually all the time so different civil affair units all over the country are experts in different areas. And in my unit, we were uh, the experts on the interface in Germany. And you go, Germany? It was the Warsaw Pact versus the uh, NATO. And so right. the, and, and every year, they would, the, one of the most you know, prestigious and, and complicated uh, activities that they did was these exercises called Reforger that would be carried out in Germany. And, <laughs> well, I was, I, I, I knew the German scenario very well because I was a, this army Soviet expert. But when you get into playing these war games, oh my God, Michael, some of the things that happen is just like crazy. Like the Germans would get all excited. Because if right. if a, a tank knocked down a, a part of their fence, 
and their cows ran and escaped. Well, then they charged the American army. <laughs> so sure, there was, there was a the Germans made a lot of money on on reserve. You know the reserve. Uh, 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 Wo sind unsere Cows? Yes, yeah, yeah. Wer yeah. kann unsere Cows nicht finden? Yeah. Right, 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 right. So, but that, that, that's the, the organization. So you've got the National Guard, and they are a different, you know, we, we didn't interface with the National Guard. Um, they were a different organization. And those people are primarily trained to um, assist governments in crowd control. Uh, I don't know that much about, you know, what they do. They do have, I mean, you can call up National Guard units and put them on a battlefield. Uh, the federal government can do that. It's like another aspect of the reserves. But And they did the, that in Iraq to some extent, didn't they? Um, national, they deployed National Guard I, to I, Iraq? I think they did. I think they did, but I, I can't swear on it. Um, so, anyway, so that's what, when you hear about this this whole you know, quagmire of calling in the National Guard and does the feds have the right to do it and all that. Well, the feds really don't have a right to just say, I'm going to activate the National Guard and send it into a state. Um, there's another law that they have to... It will enact that. It's been used before. It was used um, down south when they integrated the colleges. It was used uh, in Detroit at the Democratic uh, Convention when everything went haywire. You know, it's like... Uh, let's Chicago. Just get, in Chicago. Chica in Chicago, years. Chicago. Let's just get, let's just get the, you know. So it's it's not something that has never been used, but it's very, very seldom that's used. And so the president said that, you know, if, if this does, if you people in the States don't get your, your house in order, I'm not going to be, I don't have any decision here. I've got to get, stop this. <laughs> so... Well, you know, but if it's the governors who have to call it in, does the president really have the authority to say, you know, you go f go fix Detroit, go fix Chicago, whatever, to the National Guard? That it's under the control of the governors, right? Yeah, they would have to initiate another executive order. I forget what it's called. I mean, it's not executive order; it's it's a, a regulation. Um, okay. But it but it can be done. It's just not very often done. Okay. Well, I mean, as long as we're starting out on this, because it's kind of interesting. Where does posse comitatus come into all this? You know that concept? Where they can't use a U.S. military against civilians? Okay, yeah, that, that, um, that came up with me, too, and I'm going like, wait a minute, how does this work? Um, it, it, I, don't, I don't know enough about it to, to know. Basically, that's what everybody stands on. You're not going to turn the American regular army, the active army, against American citizens, okay? Although the president was threatening it. It can be done. And he was threatening it. Um, but it's not something you want to even get into, you know? But when everything was... Well, let me, let me, let me put it to you this way. There's no doubt in my mind, having been in civil affairs... And knowing what you have to do in order to maintain a, a relationship with the people, the civilians, and keep them on your side so, you know, you're not fighting, a, a, you know, the, the fifth column, the ones that are the civilians, the resistance, you know, you don't want to do that. So the, it's really important that you, you get a friendly relationship <coughs> with, you know, the civilian government. When you're talking about just, just you know, the situation that we found ourselves in, when you have a lot of crowds like that, um, yeah. you have a lot of bad players that can just take over. And right. everything that I saw happen was textbook infiltration by ba bad players. The right. people that were there were peaceful. You know, they, they, they didn't want it go out and get their heads busted or bust anybody. They weren't even really, at that moment, angry at the police. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They're just saying, something's wrong here. We got it. Was, it was very similar to the uh, Occupy movement. When they all went out there and they camped out in the, you know, across from Wall Street and other places, and if you listen to the people there, 
they didn't have any, you know, specific issues that they were finding fault with. They didn't know what the fault was. They knew something was wrong, and they right. needed it fixed. And so that's basically what I saw happening with the initial, you know, uproar, you know. Um, nobody was talking about defunding the police. Yes, they were angry at the police, but mostly they were just angry because who do you, who do you blame? I mean, you know, well, then you get the talkers. And the talkers say, well, you blame the police. You blame the white people. You know, the white... I mean, I have heard so much garbage out there about how white people have it in their genes to be bigots. (laughs) What are you talking about? (laughs) You know? It's like we've seen bigotry change in an instant. And again, my civil affairs background. I mean, I was the I was the intelligence officer for this company, and um, it, it, you get bigotry uh, by the by your interaction and having problems and developing it, as well as prejudicial teachings from your society. But here in America, and I'm saying this from somebody that you know is older than most people on the face of the earth. That yes, in the initial sort of the, and you tell me if you, you see the same thing. I think maybe we covered okay. this a little bit last time, but we had a situation where we, as you know, n- northern white people, we didn't know the black people were segregated. We didn't know they couldn't vote because they were had the right to vote, but they weren't being allowed to vote. We didn't know any of this. I mean, even my parents wouldn't have known it um, because it's, it's not something that was covered. Um, right. In, in those days, when we were growing up, your local, your papers were more concerned about what was happening right there in your community. You know, nobody was worried about what was happening in somebody else's community. So there was no interface of knowing there was a problem. But then all of a sudden, you know, like in our world, why are these black people so angry at us? <laughs> What's happening? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we were ignorant, you know. And even in the Chicago area where I grew up, okay, you know, there was serious uh, discrimination, discriminatory policies, redlining in in real estate, you know, slum lords, um, you know, uh, creating living situations where you know black people were living in. Uh, substandard housing with no way of of having it, you know, maintained by any kind of, uh, you know, regulations covering what a landlord is obligated to do. And, you know, working with real estate, people like redlined certain districts and black people couldn't, you know. I grew up in Oak Park, Illinois. And uh, during the time that I was a kid, uh, Oak Park saw its neighboring, formerly white suburb of Austin, which directly borders Chicago, um, become a black neighborhood. And, you know, there was white flight and all that. And, you know, Oak Park was in the direct path of that white flight. And Oak Park got its act together and said, okay, wait a minute. What about actually integrating? What about having, you know, instead of um, having all this real estate chaos and, you know, white people getting scared and moving further west to the suburbs. Hey, can, can we actually, you know, work with African Americans who, who want to live in a nicer town and not live in a ghetto? You know, can we do this? And, and Oak Park implemented some, you know, some pretty uh, progressive policies and they did successfully integrate and it remains to this day you know, kind of a model for that with, I don't know, it's about, you know, 20% African-American and it's got a great school system and it's, you know, it's still a high property value place. So, you know, but Chicago, I mean, you know, you go down to Marquette Park, you go down to the southwest side, the south side, right where, you know, the black neighborhoods border white neighborhoods and those were bigoted white neighborhoods, believe me. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was just a few miles from where I lived, but those were serious, you know, racist neighborhoods. 
And so, you know, you, you deal with them. There's the liberal north side and all the progressives. And, you know, there was a pretty varied political landscape uh, in Chicago back in those days. You know, I had Mayor Daley negotiating with Dr. King about, hey, you know, we are going to demonstrate in your in your city, Mr. Mayor, uh, because of, you know, what's going on on the southwest side. So, yeah, it was, but, you know, in terms of what happened with the George Floyd thing, you know, it was so appalling that, you know, the, the videotape is so sickening and that the deliberate murder of this guy, because that's what it is. You know, he's not, he's not resisting arrest. He's not fighting. He's not shouting. You know, it's just a flat out murder. Uh, of a guy and it's so horrifying that to me the initial protesters were hey we just want the world to know we want you know black people white people all americans to know this is not who we are you know um yeah there were you know plenty of uh, actually white people who were also killed you know by the police in in various situations but i think you know like you say nancy it was like these Mostly peaceful protesters and the agitators go, right, we've been waiting for this. We're trained for this. Let's let's throw a few Molotov cocktails. Come on, people. You know, well, that was uh, what. It, yeah, that was what it was. I mean, I knew from the get go. I know because I study all this stuff that, you know, there are trained militia and these people have been around for a long time and they're worldwide. OK, yeah. that and that's what uh, uh, Antifa. What is it? Antifa, right? Antifa. 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 Yeah, Antifa. it's a weird thing. It's a weird Antifa. The, that yeah, organi- anti-fascist. They're, they're particularly the <laughs> anti-fascist. Anti-fascist. Like we're against the fascist Trump people. <laughs> Trump people. That's right. that's their cover story. Right. And, but it started up in Europe. Did you know that those groups actually started in Europe? Not surprised. Okay, and then it comes over here, and now it. Is primarily I, I I'm a I believe in the in the black community, but this is this is this is the black state, the dark state, the whoever you want to call them, the deep state. This is what they do, you know. You talk about why why did the why did they suddenly, and it was rather suddenly. I mean, two what is it? Six hundred police officers have been wounded or killed in this thing. Six hundred seems like that's a that that number seems really high to me, but I swear to God, I think this is nationwide. Is he nationwide? Since the protesting, you know, um, that seems really high to me. But I think that's what I heard. You know, sometimes I hear something and I go, "Oh wow!" But then I think about it, I go, "Really?" You know, but you can't pull up the tape again and say, "What'd you say?" (laughs) And what's the source of that statistic? You know, and what's the agenda behind that statistic? Now, you know, I'm I'm sure it's true. There have been officers, you know, wounded or, God forbid, killed in this deal. But Well, there uh, have been, yeah. But, but they, they, they suddenly turned all of their anger against the police. Now, why, why would you have that kind of a, you know, yes, it was a police officer, but most everybody that's sane knows that, yes, there are bad cops. Yes, the systems are bad. You don't. You know, you don't spend money for tanks. This is not your job. You know, I mean, there's a right. lot wrong, a lot of really scary things that are wrong with the uh, some of the major policing, you know, organizations. But, you know, to defund and to, I mean, crowds yelling, you know, how do we be free? We kill the police. I mean, like insane things that they, they're chanting. Um, yeah. why, wh- why would you, why would that become so prevalent within this, these, you know, these, these protests. It's because you do have an army, an army of people out there that want to take down this country. And yeah, it's not, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's not just black people. In fact, I, I, I don't think there's that many black people that want to take down the country. You know, I mean, I don't think that's what their, their issue is, but the crowd gets chanting it. Uh, I don't think there's anybody except these these are you can call them anarchists. I just call them crazy people, you know. That okay, but they're organized. They're well organized. They got a lot of a lot of problems in their individual lives that they focus on being just the best at what they do, which is death and destruction. So they get the narrative and they start feeding this to the crowd. And the, yeah. ev- everybody starts focusing on the police. The police are under attack. 
Um, and then, okay, so you go through these awful, I mean, I, I, somebody, I didn't see it, but somebody said they saw a video of somebody driving through the streets of Fifth Avenue uh, area of New York with just everything's demolished. You know, I don't think that maybe we're even seeing the degree. A lot of times I, I go the other way. It's not as bad as it is. But it could be even worse in certain areas than they're really yeah. showing us because whole blocks are just destroyed. Um, but then all of a sudden, on Saturday in Philadelphia, they have people out in the streets, and, and I'm going to tell you, I, I don't think they. I don't think they're giving us anywhere near the numbers. They're saying a, a, a few thousand. B.S. That was at least a hundred thousand. And I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't go to a million. Yeah. Okay. I saw. I saw the aerial footage. It was. It was like you were looking at you know Gandhi's uh, funeral in yes. India. You know. Yes, and I have been in a crowd like a million people um, when we had uh, some, was it the 200th birthday? I don't know, 76, uh, 1976. I was in Washington, in the Commons, and they had, you know, uh, they said a million people plus. And so I know what it feels like to be in a crowd that big. Just as a little uh, trivia note, you know what the biggest... um Gathering of of human beings in one space in America, probably in in history, was for oh. the Chicago Cubs won the World Series in 2016. Oh, no. and there were five oh, no. million people celebrating so it down in Chicago. I'm so, so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, we're talking priorities. I'm a uh, Cubs fan. Uh, uh, oh, we should bring up pictures of that crowd, you know, because yeah, really. It, but but my point here is, and I did I did point it on the, uh, one of my Facebook groups. I said that you know was there too many people for the bad guys to do anything? You know there was no activity, no negative activity. Yeah, well, this, you know you've heard of Drake Bailey, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, I've talked to Drake a few times, uh, you know, over the years. Uh, anyway, one of his favorite things. He ever said he was talking about infiltrators, and um, you know he's he's got a folksy mode of expression, uh, and he's from the south. Anyway, he said, you know, with these infiltrators, that you can't, you know, they they will get into any organization they can to make trouble. And he said, you know, you can't start a dandelion collecting society in this country without somebody in a meeting suggesting that you firebomb the library. <laughs> I, always thought, I always thought that kind of said it. You know, yeah. And they'll uh, try to exacerbate any situation. Well, he's right. You yep. know, and I've yep. known about these people for a very, very long time. Um, but what stunned me on Saturday was that there was no, you know, bad actors. I mean, there might have been a few, but nothing, nothing like they had confronted before that. What and, do you think about this report? I think this came out on Kerry Cassidy uh, a few days ago, where there were special commando units that took out the agitators, that the agitators kind of disappeared overnight and everybody's wondering, hey, where'd they go? And there are reports that there were actual, you know, elite white hat commando units, call them what you will, that basically took these um, agitators out. Now, by, by, I don't mean killed them, but just like, I don't know, you know, night vision, helicopters, drop-ins, off you go, we've got gotcha, you, and, you know, you're at some military tribunal um, holding pen or something. Have you heard about that? I'm sorry, I got Ma'am? muted. I, I got muted. Um, yes, in fact, I I heard that they were executed, a thousand of them. Executed? Executed. Okay, but that's now, not but heavy. That, but that's from Fulford. Okay, okay well, now, Benjamin, Benjamin, yeah. Benjamin Fulford. Uh, a lot of times he gives you crap information but sometimes he gives you information that may not really really be true but it, the essence of it is indicating what you should be looking at that's why yes I'm aware of this 
Um, but I was aware that something something changed drastically. Remember, I'm an intelligence officer, and my battlefield just changed drastically. Where's the enemy? Where'd they go? Well, if you if you know anything about the U.S. military, you know that the, we've got the best special forces units in the world. Yeah. You know, and to assume that the president didn't execute a, a special operations to get these people off the ground to get them out of the way whether they were executed or not I doubt it I absolutely doubt it I think that's bullshit yeah. and you know um but to get them out of the way oh yeah they got them out of the way um there's no doubt in my mind that you know these th- if you just watched some of the way that they were organized, you know, I mean, and oh, Antifa was w- put out something that they were going to have this big or big group, can, you know, come in together and they were going to have, um, I don't know what, train you in how to eye gouge or some dang thing. And so right. they, they posted that, you know, all over Facebook. Special democratic skills that every <laughs> upstanding citizen needs, how to gouge out eyes. Exactly. And, um, some some white supremacists said, uh, "When's that time and place? We'll be there, <laughs> we'll be there. right?" And, and all of a sudden, and team, oh well, maybe we won't do this, you know. So uh, I, I'm sorry, you know, there are protection things that are happening behind the scene that you know is not exactly legal, okay? Because it, there's there's and this is the way it's always been. You know, the CIA is not supposed to look at an American citizen, period. Okay? Right. And we know what they've done. You know, uh, so, so when we're, when you, you're very, you know, because of your background, you're very, uh, aware and, uh, focus on law. But sometimes to keep things working right, you, you have to kind of throw the law book out. Um, right. Who throws the law book out and under what authority? And once they've thrown it out, You know, uh, what precedent does that set for them to just do, you know, okay, it's great under the president that you like or that some other people like. Oh, great. Now, we go. well, then there's an election. It changes hands and suddenly that precedent has been set and it's in the hands of, shall we say, bad actors who now have power. And that's what you got to worry about, you know. Well, yes, but I also believe that there is a secret war. It isn't so secret between um, the same kind of forces um, and military forces that we're at war with. We are in absolutely a revolt. Um, It's been going on for years. And the American people don't know it, nor do they want to know it, (laughs) for the most part, you know. But they were forced into acknowledging it because of, first off, 5G. Okay? Now... um, the 5G situation, in my opinion, as I've been telling everybody, is for control, for uh, being able to watch and know everything that everybody is doing, and it's a weapon system to kill you off and depopulate if that's what they need to do. Right, and they can call it COVID because it mimics the symptoms. Well, yeah. COVID mimics. The, COVID is not, COVID doesn't exist. I mean, it's out there, but not what they're talking about. Um, it's just, you know, that 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 is such so so. Yeah, anyway. well, this is one of the things we can I, that I think, you know, in the censorship department, um, it's not a good idea for us to say something like "quote COVID doesn't exist." I mean, you know, obviously the virus exists, and obviously it's out there, and <clears throat> it's a lot more complex situation. It's much more complex than most people understand, and yeah. so it is. It is five G symptoms that are being called COVID and then not treated correctly. (laughs) You know, there are ways of treating 5G um, symptoms, but not the way they were doing it because they were assuming it was, you know, a lung infection. And in fact, it was not a lung infection. It was the lungs couldn't get enough oxygen. Um, Yeah. So... Uh, we're not, we're not going to cover that particular thing, but I want to get back to the concept of the 5G because 
you and I, we got on board this thing, and nobody was, I mean, we didn't know very many people, a couple of websites, but it seemed like there was a movement to, to, to all of a sudden, a bunch of people just said, well, we got to do something about this, and there were a whole lot of websites that cropped up very, very quickly uh, back in the spring when we started this, you know? Right. So... Was it last year? It was last year, right? We've been yeah, we've been at this for more than a year. Can you believe it? Year, I know. And um, so all of a sudden, and and they, they, and the reason that it it really started moving was the fact that they started pushing five G. Now, everything that I've been watching this for forty years, everything that I knew was that the big push was going to be in twenty, that twenty twenty would be when they would start to lay this out. I had no, and it's stupid of me. I had no idea that they were rolling it out secretly all over the nation um, so they've got the 5G and they do the same thing in England and they get Gateshead and then we have a, a spiritual intervention because the guy lives next door to all this is the one guy on the face of the earth that would look at this stuff and say I think that's a weapon system <laughs> and that's Mark Steele Right, and then they throw a component at him. They ticked off and throw a component at him. So, thank you very much. I'll go examine this. Right, and then he he's got forensic evidence in his hands showing that the light systems, the the street lights, had a component in it that is five G related, and five G covers a lot of different things, you know. But it's a technology that certainly is not involved in street lamps. And he's able to take this forensic forensics and go talk to um, uh, Sasha Stone. And Sasha Stone is able to understand what Mark is saying and put together an incredible, to date, it's still the best movie out there, uh, the ap- Apocalypse, what, 5G Apocalypse. Right, 5G, uh, yeah, um, 5G Apocalypse. Yeah, and um, I highly recommend that everybody that is listening to this, if you haven't seen that, you should. Um so so now you've got you know some and and Sasha does have some you know presence let's put it that way um and and the movie was actually very the documentary was very good so yeah it was excellent yeah and so um Mark goes and and says something to the to the government he thinks that the local gates had commission people are don't know what's happening right which they right. didn't but their reaction was to call him a terrorist and try to get him thrown in jail. And yeah, because he's saying alarming things. Yeah, making you scared, you know. Well, he was scared for crying out loud. And so they, they turn on this 5G system, and they were, they were openly telling people that they were doing 5G. But it was the hidden stuff in the, in the light street lamps that, you know, really got Mark's attention. He probably wasn't even paying attention to 5G until then. When you see it yeah. in your neighborhood, you all of a sudden take another look at it, you know. But Mark, then, um, well, we we got involved with Mark, and uh, my God, that man taught me so much. But the the government's response of trying to get him put in jail, okay, is like uh, as a chess move. That was not a good thing. <laughs> Right, they created a martyr, you know, they positioned themselves as repressing free speech, and he was recognized by the court as being an actual expert on the subject. So that was a PR for them. It was not a good, that was not a good move. Um, And got, and so now Mark's got the attention of, you know, a lot of other people around the world. And everybody starts waking up very fast. Now they had been waking up. Now let's go back to fundamentals of metaphysics. Cosmic reality rule one. Reality is what you think it is. Number two is majority wins. And that's not necessarily a number of people. It's it's the focus on a specific agenda, a uh, specific reality. And the third one is that everybody in the control of a given reality will keep everybody else from knowing rule one and two. And we were beginning to understand this. Hey, I wrote a book called Cosmic Reality. I gave you the rules. And I'm not saying that in a sense of ego, I'm saying that I am a player in in this thing that was given certain information that then became a book, 
You know, this is the secrets, and I was not alone. There were a tremendous number of other people also getting the same kind of messaging. People were waking up. So now they rush the 5G. And But intervention, Mark comes along, Mark gets some notoriety. You know, all of a sudden, everybody starts to wake up to 5G. What do you mean you're putting 5G in, in tails? Oh, no, 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 you can't do this. You know, everybody starts waking up. Well, think about it, Michael. When... When we were in the beginning of that battle, we were up against an organization that was so entrenched in everything in our society, everything, um, that to me, I'd been watching this, I'd been fighting it for so long, I, I, I knew that we would have to have a spiritual awakening to, make, yeah. to, to, to win. I mean, there, there was the 3D chessboard was really, really uh, against us. It was. It, I don't care how many people got involved in it. They had too much equipment that could, you know, give you give give a crowd a certain energy field, and they're all going to start killing each other. You know, I know uh. this about the technology. So, um, yeah, I, I I said, well, I'm I'm going to go down fighting anyway and then within six weeks all of a sudden I'm like oh my god they're all waking up you know there was a yeah, massive fat. response in six months uh, six well six weeks initially it was a six week time frame and all of a sudden everybody started wake all these websites out there this one's doing this one and this one's doing this one um, and then you get to you know <laughs> like let's let's just talk about last fall, you know. You get to last fall, and there are now court cases starting. There are changes, and court cases meaning you know at the federal level, um, there okay. are senators having hearings on this. The telecommunications companies say, "Yeah, we never tested it for health things." I mean, there were so many amazing things happening, but still, you had this brain freeze thing. And people would go up to government officials and say, look at you can't do this, and they would do it anyway. Yeah, I remember what happened, you know, in, in Taos, New Mexico. We went down there and had 300 people show up to protest at a county commissioner's meeting. And, you know, experts and concerned citizens, 10% of the town, 10% of, you know, Taos County, of the county, had actually signed a petition for a halt to the rollout so that, you know, sufficient studies could be done. And the county commissioners just ignored it. You know, okay, well, there's evidence that <clears throat> indicates there may have been some uh, financial interest applied. Um, but, yeah, yeah, it's... Um, and again, I looked, at, wake I, up. <clears throat> I looked at the, uh, the battle and said, wow, I mean, these people, these government officials that... I've never trusted government officials because I think you have to be kind of like a, a sociopathic kind of personality to be a government official. <laughs> okay, well, I, I hear you. I mean, it's, it's a pretty broad statement, but yes, generally speaking, there's a fair mix of those folks in there. You know, it, it, why would you want those jobs? Those are terrible jobs, you know, unless you're in it for something else. You know, it's funny. JFK supported, supposedly said, like a couple of years in, you know, into his term, uh, he said, "You know, this is really kind of a lousy job." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kennedy grew up in those circles. You know, his dad was ambassador to the UK, and uh, you know, and he just said, "This job kind of sucks." But what the heck? You know, I got to follow through. Got reelected. I mean, I just, I don't know why. I mean, if you think about it, you know, just the, why would you want that job? Unless you're in it for money or prestige or, you you know, it seems like every government official, every mayor, every governor is, you know, wants to be president of the United States. Well, okay, you know, good luck to, with that um, yeah. but, because it's a lousy job. Uh, but anyway, so to me, it was like, well, you know, yes, people are waking up, but can they wake up in time? And that's why I would say, you know, give an excuse to your government officials to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know, remember me saying that? 
Because I, I do, believe- and it's yeah, it's a good thing. It's like FDR, you know. It's it's the late 1930s, you know, early 40s. Okay, maybe Pearl Harbor hasn't happened yet, and people are waking up to uh, the Holocaust, and they're coming to FDR. You know, this is I think this is before uh, Pearl Harbor, so we were not yet at war with Japan and Germany. And so, you know, Mr. President, you know, there, there is this horrible, unimaginable thing that that's happening in Germany to the Jewish people. You know, you've got to do something, and you know, and and because Pearl Harbor was the wake up and then everybody, you know, got on board, he said, you have to apply sufficient pressure to me and you are not able to do that because I have pressure from lots of other places. You so basically he was saying, you have to give me an excuse to do the right thing. I have to be able to go to the other power brokers who control the votes, that controls the funding, that controls what we might possibly do to help the Jewish people in Europe. You know, apply the pressure. Give me an excuse. You you are not yet able to do that, so I cannot act. I mean, it's you know, it's what they call it. Um, what was Kissinger's you know, realpolitik, right? You know, but it, it's you're right. You got to give me an excuse to do the right thing. So, in the fall time, okay, in, in that time frame. It was like, uh, to me, like the coin is in the air and I don't know if it's going to be heads or tails. You know, it was really still iffy. But I was, I, from a, a, an energetic and a, a metaphysical standpoint, I could feel this waking up of people. Just over 5G. You know, yeah. and, and then because you, you start talking 5G, then you start talking about giving people vaccinations and all the other stuff starts to, and, I, and I watched people on the radio station the people that were were newbies coming in you know and they were they they dribbled and drabbled in you know but they're like what are you people talking about I'm scared to death you know why are you talking like this but I need to know those were very very key people because once they started w- waking up and remember every single time a human being makes a change like awakening like, oh, my God, there is something wrong. Oh, my God, it's that? You know, all this learning that happens when we talk about an awakening. It's not so much, in many cases, an awakening as an awareness. You suddenly become aware of these problems. That, every person that does that changes 40,000 other people energetically. Yeah. You know, so when you make an energetic change, your vibration is has 48,000 other people who are very close to this vibration. And simply because you made it, you're going to affect them. It's the concept of resonance is what makes everything go. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. I uh, needed some idle reading last night, and I picked up a book about, uh, it's called The Maid and the Queen. Maid, M-A-I-D, like a maiden, right, a girl. And it's about uh, Joan of Arc and uh, Queen Yolande of Aragon, who was the power broker who recognized the the potential power of this girl from this peasant girl who believed she was sent by God to save France, right? And so it's a it's a really fascinating study of how Yolande, Queen Yolande of Aragon, recognized the power of the story to wake people up. And that was the key factor. I mean, as a military strategic factor, you got to know, Nancy, with your background, that, you know, the morale of the troops, the belief of the troops and the rightness of what they're doing and the belief that they actually can win, you know, and, you know, it's the famous von Clausewitz and all these other people about, you know, the art of war and Sun Tzu and everything. <clears throat> it is, you know, the the will to win is why a defending force if they're being invaded they're defending their homes and their families, and there is much stronger motivation to defend them than some invasive force. You know, they're convinced by propaganda or some false flag. Oh, we got to invade these people. They could be a threat to us someday. If you're defending your home and your family, you're much more motivated. What happened with Joan was that the French had been defeated and defeated and defeated by the English over and over again. More than half the country was under English control. The the Dauphin, you know, the crown prince was getting ready to throw his crown into the river and flee to Scotland. And along comes this peasant girl and suddenly the French woke up to the 
you know, that spirit was on their side. There was a spiritual awakening. And when, you know, okay, here comes this peasant girl and, you know, the Dauphin has said, yes, you can, you know, take the army to relieve the siege of Orléans. The people of Orléans are starving. When she just led the French troops herself, this girl charged, you know, the, the English forts that were enforcing the siege and starving the people, they just went nuts. They, you know, this just flame of, of, you know, patriotic fervor. They just stormed these English forts and, and suddenly everything changed and it was a spiritual awakening. And then, you know, within a couple of months, the English were basically finished. It took years to, for the mopping up operation, but they would, they, they, they had virtually wrapped it up and France would have become an English province for all time. And then, you know, here comes this peasant girl from God. And, you know, 10 weeks later, it's, it's all over its history. The Hundred Years' War was over. So I think we're kind of in a similar place. Exactly that, the know, same place. It's, yeah. it's the first two rules. You know, reality is what you think it is. And, and the amount of force focus on a given outcome is what, what will make the change. It's all in the mind. It's all in the mindset. And that's a great example of it. She believed in it. She believed absolutely. And because she believed, it was contagious. And they believed. Yeah. And because yeah. all of them are believing that, the opposite forces who are paid militia, they, <laughs> they're going to get out of the way. Yeah, exactly. They, you know, they weren't that on fire to take France, those English troops. But hey, well, they won and they won and they won. There was a, a key thing after Orléans called the Battle of Pate. And, you know, the seasoned French commanders are saying, well, there's a big English reinforcement coming in under this guy, Sir John Falstaff, and he's very formidable. And maybe we ought to pull back. You know, OK, we we lift the siege of Orléans. We took these other couple of towns, but I don't know. Here come. And, you know, and so now by this time they believed in Joan. Right. And so she's at the war council and they said, you know, well, Joan, what what do you say? And she says, tomorrow morning, I ask you. My friends, do you have good spurs? Good spurs, what, for your horses? And they're saying, what, you know, that we will need to be running away from the English? And she said, no, they will be fleeing before you, and you will need good spurs to catch them. God has assured the victory. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. But it was like, if she had, you know, hesitated, gone the other way, it's like, oh, you know, the... The voice of God through the through Joan has said, "Well, we need good spurs. Does that mean we're going to run away, Joan?" It's, no, <laughs> God has put them in your hands. You just need good spurs to catch them, which is what happened exactly. Uh, the next day it was a devastating defeat, and that was that was it for the English in France. It was just you know one little word from a source that people have woken up to and believed in can turn the tide, and it can happen so quickly because it's all in the mind. You know, yeah. So so let's go back to our 5G scenario. Um so in the fall I'm I'm like it's a 50-50 thing. I don't know we've got to wake up enough I, it's 50, I'm as an intelligence officer, okay? As, yeah. as a spiritual warrior, I knew we were going to win. I just didn't know how. I didn't know what the story would be. All right. All right. So we get to the springtime and uh, well not even spring, late winter. And all of a sudden, we, we're in this pandemic situation, and you know, it's it's like the the world stops, people lose their jobs, everything is in the change. I mean, it's I don't I seem to be the only one that really, really is like, oh my god, I can't believe this happened, because to me, it's so outrageous that the world stopped. Yeah. All right. Now that's a major, major. You know, put the brakes on for whatever reason. It stopped. Okay. Now, when it stops like this, you you have an opportunity to kind of like breathe and to look and see what's really happening. And a lot of people are going through some really ch amazing changes. And because they're going through these the changes of waking up, I mean. I was on with somebody that was lamenting, oh, my family, they all are so unhappy, they hate this, and, and I said, 
And, well, how do you feel about it? And she said, I think it's great. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. and it's, uh, it sounds so awful when you, you put it in the, but she, she, and she was representing another story in all this. The people that are realizing the awakening, that are realizing yeah. it personally in their families, seeing, I mean, people will listen to you tell stories that they never would have listened to before. Yeah, it's funny. Maybe you've seen this meme going around on Facebook. It's a picture of Bill Gates, and he's looking kind of um, sour. And it's like, it looks like, you know, uh, a schoolboy who's been reprimanded. He's sitting there in his coat and tie, you know, but he's looking kind of like sour. And the, um, the caption on the picture of him says, that expression, when you tried to kill everybody and you woke them all up instead. (laughs) <laughs> you know it's like oh shucks try to kill everybody and darn it they're all waking up that's funny <laughs> um ah. okay so you know it, it, i i have a i have a clip of, of a bill gates it's a we'll, we'll do it in the second hour maybe because it's like has Bill Gates as a cartoon character explaining his life. And it really, really, for people that know the true story, are going like, oh, wow, that's it in a nutshell. It's three-minute tape, right? We'll, yeah, we'll play that. Be fun. We'll, we'll yeah. play that. Um, but the 5G question, okay, so we have this pandemic that shuts everything down, but it didn't take me more than about 30 seconds when I found out where it had happened uh, in Wuhan, because that was one of the first three cities that ever were 5G'd. And to know the symptoms of what 5G is and to see what it was. I knew it was 5G instigated. Whatever, it, whatever the, wherever the virus sort of came from, it was being exasperated by the 5G because the 5G in this city that's been there for, uh, at least probably six months, um, in a 5G, I mean, what is it? 10, I think it got, I read it got turned on in Wuhan in October, and you know that the uh, that the virus began to take hold, like you know within weeks. Well, I, they had been turning it on. It, it had been on longer than that. Um, in in what I the, the what I know about it, but the reality <laughs> is, the, but the reality is, is that every time you make an, uh, an uh, electromagnetic change to the technology you have a pandemic. The first one was radio. They put the radio out. All of a sudden, they have the flu of uh, World War I. You know, it doesn't, we don't even have a name for it. And then they um, put uh, satellites into the, into the sky, and you got another flu. I mean, I don't remember all the names of the flus. But within six months of any electromagnetic change from radar, radio, radar, then you had the the telecommunications of like the three G, and then you go into the four G situation. You know you got situations that are occurring. In, you know that are not good at all. But then you 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 have a five G. Start putting five G in, and now you got this terrible thing that's happening worldwide. So there is definitely a scientifically based connection to some of this stuff. So when I saw the symptoms. I knew it was 5G because it was in that city. And that city, had I think it had been on. They had started this six months before this in, in parcels. Um, and I can, I can prove that because you remember um, when they turned on a whole segment of the 5G and uh, three fires in different cities started up? Do you remember that? Right, that was in uh, Korea, wasn't it? No, I think this was in China. I think this was in China. And okay. Korea had already done it for the Olympics. The Winter Olympics, they had had 5G systems in there. Okay, that was okay. one of the first places that they ever actually started 5G was in uh, at the Olympics, Winter Olymp- Olympics in uh, Korea. All right. Okay, but the China thing was three cities had major fires when they turned this on. And it was, the, you know, part of their telecommunication system. Um, oh well, it was something was uh, high. I don't know what excuse they gave it, but anyway. So, but this was back way before you know, because Mark talked about it in one of his second or third shows. So it had happened earlier in in the year, um, 
But regardless, the people there had been under attack. And the symptoms of 5G, you know, overload, we knew it's it matched this disease. So, and of course, a lot of us started screaming about it, and nobody really wanted to pay attention to it. All right. Um, so they take us down and stuff. But now you got another spiritual intervention thing because the dang thing started in China. And now President Trump, who has been anti China since the get go, has the ability to say, uh, maybe we want to look at China again. You know, because why? Because all of the that all of the medical support was associated with China. And China stupidly said that they were considering stopping, you know, other people from getting the stuff they had. That put fear into the American people, into American industry, and now they're going like, what were we thinking when we gave over our country to a foreign country? Yeah, let me – you brought this up, Nancy, and before we wrap up, to sort of set the framework for what we may talk about in the second hour here, you brought this article forward. Um, executive order creates a committee to replace Team Telecom review of foreign telecom investments. Um, I'd like to just read the first couple of paragraphs of it. I think it, it touches good, directly good, on what you're good, saying here. Good, Okay? Yeah. Okay, so recent developments have positioned the executive branch – to exert greater influence over the U.S. telecommunications sector. On April 4th, 2020, President Trump issued an executive order creating a new process for executive branch review of telecommunications-related applications and licenses involving foreign participation. New procedures replace the review currently performed by an informal multi-agency group known as Team Telecom. Excuse me. The mandate includes several novel features that expand the reach and scope of national security review beyond what Team Telecom could accomplish. Executive order authorizes the newly formed Committee for the Assessment of Foreign Participation in the United States Telecommunications Services Sector to conduct a national security and law enforcement review of any applications and licenses that pose risks to national security and law enforcement interests of the United States. Now, here's an interesting sentence here. Federal Communications Commission Chairman Ajit Pai and Commissioner Michael O'Reilly praised the executive order and Commissioner Brendan Carr urged the committee to investigate every carrier owned by the Chinese government that now connects to networks in the U.S. Now, as we know, these guys on the FCC, the FCC is riddled with former major telecom executives. The Oversight Commission on the industry is policed by executives of the industry, okay, which has been our our huge problem with, you know, they're FCC propagandists. They're not looking after the people. They're not, you know, policing this industry. They are basically supervising the unregulated, the the unexamined rollout of this lethal technology. But now all of a sudden, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, let's review the foreign licenses. Let's have national security review. Uh, of every carrier. Now, is this because they want to position American 5G technology? Well, we're way behind Huawei, right? You know, we don't have our own to roll out from what I understand. So just trying to follow the money, I'm really curious as to what's motivating these guys to say, yeah, okay, let's review all the licenses and investigate every carrier owned by the Chinese government that now connects to networks. Because the big question is, does this mean shutting down existing 5G networks that are now operating you know, throughout America in major cities that are being maybe possibly used to exacerbate 5, the, you know, the bug? Um, a lot of questions come into play here. Do you want to give a little thumbnail on that, or should we go right to our break before the second hour? Let's go to the break and um – because it's probably going to be a little bit more more over the hour right now. Um, Okay, I was listening to you and didn't set up. Uh, Okay. We are broadcasting, right? We are on, you you did hit station? We're good? People are hearing us, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, Okay, okay, this is uh, Humanity by Barbara Menezes and Craig Stewart. It's just under five minutes. All right, we'll see you in about five minutes, folks. Sharing with love 
Okay, welcome back, everybody. Radio 5G. And uh, we're covering a pretty wide range of uh, amazing stuff coming down uh, right now. So about this executive order that Trump issued April 4th, 2020. Uh, We just gave a little thumbnail of it at the end of the last hour just to do a a quick refresher. Uh, This puts in a new uh, multi-agency task force to review um, every carrier owned by the Chinese government that now connects to networks in the U.S. And the FCC is um, is behind this. So what are you thinking about about this? You know, when, when we talk about FCC commissioners being gung-ho telecom executives behind the 5G rollout, I mean, how likely is it that this is actually going to turn into – a, a pullback of 5G. Well, first off, well, first um, off um, we got a Neko. You got, got your. Neko. You got your. Am I doing something? Am I doing something? Um, you got your headphones on. I don't know. 
What have we got going here? Did I accidentally turn up the um, reverb or something? I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> I'm looking. Can we keep talking, or is it unworkable for you? Well, it's it's probably well, it's going, it's over going over the, over the radio. radio. Okay, well, I'm not on the radio. Maybe it's at your end. It's is something happening here. Okay. okay. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I think I cleared it. Okay, the button was I don't know. <laughs> Push buttons until it works. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Um. First off, the, I don't think that the telecommunic FCC was behind it. I think this was an executive order stating this is what we're going to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So the fact that they would be saying, oh, yeah, this is a good idea. Think about it again. There's two things that we could say. We could say, well, they're really good people that knew the problems and are just relieved that somebody else is taking it off of their plate. That's one one you know way we could look at it. The other way is, wow, you, you mean that we can build our own equipment? Think of all the money we'll save from not dealing with the Chinese going into our pockets. Right, but it would also put the rollout back by like at least a year or two. Well, yes and no, because um, who knows what kind of, you know, every, uh, you, you know this, that you, you get a new computer. Well, by the time the computer gets to you, it's already an old computer, technology wise. So there may be even more, uh, <laughs> I don't know, stuff out there that's better. You know, and and so if you if you've got and you're going to be funded correctly, you know, um, you you've got a situation where you really are going to get the better. You remember when when you know after the war they took and they rebuilt Ch- Germany with factories, and these were brand new state of the art factories, and the British who supposedly had won the war are working on bombed out crap. From you know, fifty years right. in the future, so th- it offers, let's say, um, potential. And remember, these telecommunication guys, if they're just you know not deep state, dark, evil people, then they're not doing it for control. The you know, I mean, yeah. it's always layers. You only it's like an onion. You only know what you you know. You don't see right. the whole picture. So they're not maybe as concerned about getting it out fast as the dark side would like to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, then you look at, I mean, they'd have so much egg on their faces, though. I mean, the propaganda campaign rolled out for 5G. You know, you know you've got um, Verizon, massive, you know, you've got Super Bowl commercials about, you know, I'm 5G and I'm talking to my grandmother in the laundromat and I got great reception. Of course, 5G is not about great reception for your cell phone. It's about making money off of data, but never mind. I mean, the, the, the propaganda campaign, you know, behind the 5G rollout, the, the, the huge investor encouragement stuff like, you know, invest in the new 5G rule. This is the the wave of the future. You can make all your money. You know, it would just be such, you know, I mean, talk about egg all over your faces. You go, uh, well, okay, national security view. Whoops, the Chinese are all over this thing. They're spying on us. You're going to have to wait a couple of years, folks, but it'll be good, clean American technology. I don't know. I mean, I oh, hey, remember the world is stopped. It's not ever going to be the same. And they have the best excuse in the world. It's Chinese. We can't do it. We can't bring it in. They, 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 no, there's no problem here. Uh, you know, as far as okay. you know, to me that that'd be a, no, a well, no, non-starter. Point. You know, they've got the best excuse in the world, and it's an opportunity to to do better and do either good or bad. Uh, you know, that's them. Um, but the fact that you, okay, let's just assume that you know they really want to continue with this. This is a delay. The delay of reviewing all of this type of, you know, the government bureaucracy. This, this review is going to stop them. It's going to be delayed anyway. So why not get behind it? Because the option is if you stop use, if you, if the government forces you not to use Chinese equipment, then you have the opportunity to build your own equipment and to bring, you know, bring it back to America. 
Okay, I'm, uh, let me read a couple of more paragraphs from this article okay, you brought good, in. Okay, good, because, good. Because it starts to get into more detail here. It says, okay, the committee I mean, is being encouraged, and this is being praised as executive order by the FCC guys, you know, urge the committee to investigate every carrier owned by the Chinese government that now connects to networks in the U.S. And it goes on. The focus on China, coupled with the ability to review existing licenses, right, will make China Telecom and China Unicom, which are two Chinese-controlled holders of FCC authorizations to provide international telecom services, this will make them more vulnerable. In fact, on April 9th, the Department of Justice announced that executive branch agencies with national security expertise they unanimously recommended that the FCC revoke and terminate China Telecom's authority to provide international telecom service in the U.S. The focus on China may also put small rural carriers with Huawei equipment in their networks in the committee's crosshairs. Now here, I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking about situations like in Taos, where the county commissioners approved a language change to the, the land use regulations that allowed a backdoor, smoothed out process for 5G to come in. Um, you know, these, these, and there's not a lot of people. We're talking northern New Mexico, beautiful, gorgeous country, you know, artist colony and all that. That um, the executive order also addresses long standing industry concerns that Team Telecom, by providing structure and increased transparency, to a review process that had previously been criticized as criticized as opaque and one-sided. Yeah, you could say that. You know, it's been criticized as being a, uh, you know, an industry-sponsored, you know, slam dunk. You've gotten a chance to look at this imposition of a deadly technology on American citizens. Um, here's some more up from this. Clearly defined membership and timelines written analysis and standardized questions and mitigation measures should give telecommunications providers and their non-U.S. investors more clarity and predictability. The new procedures and timelines, however, give the executive branch agencies a great deal of discretion to determine when they've received all the information they need to make an assessment. They also still permit a lengthy and potentially burdensome review. Now, if you go to Sasha Stone's documentary, it opens – with footage of that FCC chairman guy, uh, you know, back when when they started to just get rid of all possible obstacles, like I think oh, it was Wheeler, Amendment. wasn't it, Wheeler? Yeah, Wheeler. Yeah, you know, getting rid of all possible obstacles like the Tenth Amendment, you know, the Constitution of the United States, obstacles like that. That you say, you know, we, this needs to be imposed, you know, without undue obstacles being imposed, right? You know, in other words. Um, making sure it's safe and doesn't kill people. Um, but now this is about allowing a lengthy and potentially burdensome review. And this seems like such a, a, a huge shift. Oh, granted, okay, you know, we're in lockdown. The world is changing. Nothing's going to be the same. But, I mean, I would love for this to be true. I mean, that is it just about the security issue with China or is there some degree of awakening within the executive branch to, you know, are, are they sufficiently aware of the agenda of the, the dark faction that there's actually some kind of white hat counter move against 5G going on here? I'm finding that hard to believe. It would be lovely, but I don't know. You know, I don't know if the wake up has gone that far. What do you think? Well, I believe that reality is what we think it is, and I believe in humanity. I believe there are more people out there that will do the right thing than those that will knowingly do the wrong thing. That's my reality. And what's going to happen depends on what people begin to think and to focus on. We got, we got a, a tremendous number of Legos that have been thrown into the air, and they're starting to fall back. It's up to us from the point that they're starting to fall back to decide what reality we want. It's up to us. And, you know, you, you want to see those people as being uh, nefarious and, you know, just these really, you know, swamp beings, as some people call them. Uh, that's the reality you're going to get. 
if you want to think that there is an awakening and that every time I come on the radio and I say to people, it's a thought war. You have got to get your thoughts completely focused on what you really want to see happen and not in details. You know, I, I like to think in terms of bring me the Garden of Eden reality again. You know, we're pieces and peace and, and we're a family and humanity is, you don't have to, you know, struggle. You, nobody said you had to struggle when we got here. I mean, it wasn't like, hey, come to this place and struggle. No, it's come to this place and make it into a Garden of Eden again. You know, yeah. that's, that's what we're doing here. So, you know, l- you know, step up. Live into that. You know, become what you want to become. And what do you want to become? You want to become a human being. This is what I would be- want to become. I want to be a human being that can see the good versus the bad. Not because I'm stupid i've been at this game for a long time but because i believe in thought if i think you are good the chances of you doing good things is better than if i think you're a slime bag and you're going to kill me right i mean i i hear you on all this i mean i was i was raised on this i mean i uh you know i took silver mind control when i was 15 years old you know um in terms of remote diagnosis and self-healing and self-hypnosis and programming for, you know, conscious uh, shifts based on, you know, your your mind. So, you know, I'm with you on all this. And, and then I, you know, I, I look at, okay, so if enough of us are seeing FCC commissioners acting out of, you know, humanity instead of greed, well, okay, that's going to be an influence on that person. But then you've got Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and the Children's Health Defense, Health Defense, um, Children's Health Defense, you know, undertaking battles in the courts against forced vaccination, against you know, five G towers, and you know, that's that's a big action too. That's a big you know, sacred activist in, in my you know terminology. 3D action that, yeah, our our thoughts can help clear the way for that. Our consciousness, our awakened consciousness can help clear the way for that. And, um, you know, it needs, it needs the boots on the ground 3D actions too. And um, I'm, I'm always trying to balance those two. It's, it's tricky. Well, I think you've gone, I think we're in a situation where you've got to either decide one way or the other. Okay, because let me let me put it to you this way. I totally agree with you. You know, 3D activism, if you've got the time and you've got a lifestyle that will allow it, is so incredibly powerful in changing the subconscious, the conscious, the universal consciousness of humanity that is the nurturing ground for awakening. I totally agree with that. But at the same time, I'm going to point to what what has happened. You have them pushing 5G. We push back, they push back, and suddenly the world goes into a state of stop. Okay? That was a victory for us. You know, yeah. no matter no matter what brought us to it, whatever story brought us to it, the fact that they had to stop, you know, is an indication that the spiritual energy, the thought energy, whether you're doing it because you're an activist and focused on that, or you're an elderly person who knows that the world sucks and you want to see changes, and so you pray to God all day. Or you just live a life where you're nice to people. You know, you yeah. you, 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 you want to see the, the good side of people versus the bad side. Okay, well, let's, I got an idea, let's project forward a little bit to what's coming down the pike Uh, without getting into fear but like okay how can we proactively you know energize the awakening energize the quantum reality of our thoughts creating you know a a new world you know a a better freer more uh, abundant and and caring world okay so you've got Fauci coming out in the New York Times big article on you know 
the bug is, is COVID is, is my worst nightmare. It's worse than I could possibly have imagined. And there's going to be a second wave coming shortly. And uh, we're going to have a vaccine ready by July. Never mind the vaccines take a year and a half of, and then, you know, two years and then testing and see whether or not it kills people. No, dear Mr. F- Dr. Fauci is telling us it, it, it's coming in July, right? And so this is, you know, in terms of how um, the George Floyd, in, you know, tragedy and then the ensuing uh, unrest, as we call it, uh, you know, with, with riots and the rest of it, was to take back the narrative uh, because, um, you know, the pandemic was not coming up with the numbers that they needed it to to sufficiently scare everybody. Everybody's waking up. Fauci's being exposed. Gates is being exposed. You've got frontline doctors, you know, saying this is not what people are saying it is. You've got, you know, the leading epidemiologist in the country saying, hey, this has a 0.01, maybe 0.02% mortality rate. Uh, This is not worth a lockdown. Um, Then you've got, you know, this planned coming Counter move, second wave. See how all those people who were telling you there was nothing to it, who wanted you to take your masks off, who said it was 0.02%, see how they have endangered your lives. It might be time to lock those people up because they have, they have led, their story has led to death. See what's going on. This is what's, this is what is their agenda, whether they get to pull it off or not. You know, I mean, just in terms of as a strategist, what I'd love to get your input on as a strategist, you know, you have to anticipate the enemy's moves and go, okay, we've got plans A, B, and C in case they implement plans A, B, and C. You know, what is what is our move? Should they, you know, be able to successfully, um, you know, you get a big second wave in October as an October surprise of the worst kind before the election to take Trump out. Um, are we... You know, is this just fear mongering on my part? Do we even bring this stuff up or do we need to, to be aware and thinking about how to move, how to take the high road spiritually um, to be able to transcend and move beyond this? Do, do you want to, what are your thoughts? Okay, let me play a three minute, 47 second uh, BG puppet shot. Willie G's dystopian future. <laughs> and it's like a cartoon with Gates talking because I'm suspect, I, I didn't get to listen to the last few minute one, one minute of it or something. But, um, it's, it's an overview of what many of us that have looked at this thing think is this, their scenario. So let's just hear what they have to say. Does that sound fair? That was a yes. Sorry. It's a mean. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right. Let me start. My this. excitement. Let me when start we had the out. opportunity wait, 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 to hey, release, Gates, uh, stop, declare stop, stop, our stop. own. Just, just stop for a second. Gates here. Okay. So I was only halfway through it, apparently. Okay. Here we go. Useless eaters. As your unqualified, non elected global human health overlord, I'd like to take this opportunity to flaunt my position of power and influence over society and share some of my plans for you and your future. When I amassed my fortune in computer software, I demonstrated that I was willing to lie, steal code, cheat my partners, and exercise monopolistic control to destroy my competitors. Now that I've retired, I can rebrand myself as a humanitarian. With my for-profit foundation mass grading as a charity, I can advocate for population reduction and sponsor mass human experiments with unproven vaccines in vulnerable populations. Like my father, a powerful banker, eugenicist, and Rockefeller crony himself, it's always been my ambition to decide who lives and, more importantly, how many have to die. Whether it's under the guise of climate change or world health, it's really all about controlling and culling the human herd for fun and profit. In November of last year, I hosted Event 201, a war game simulation of a global pandemic. Leaders from private corporations, global banks, governments, and the media got together to strategize ways they could align in lockstep when responding to a worldwide health crisis. Using a coordinated campaign of fear-mongering, intimidation, social shaming, and economic blackmail, 
we realized that we could get around dangerous philosophies like individual liberty and national sovereignty. With an obedient population, we would be free to implement our own top-down solutions like forced quarantines, social distancing, contact tracing, and mandatory testing as a means to seize technocratic control of society. Now imagine my excitement when we had the opportunity to release, uh, declare our own global pandemic. It was my chance to look like the Nostradamus of public health and to position myself and business partners like Dr. Fauci as the de facto authorities on response and solutions. Through exaggerated doomsday scenarios and computer simulations, our petty control freaks instituted harsh rules and draconian lockdowns. Even after our dire predictions proved false, scared and well-meaning people continued to submit to the arbitrary and foolish demands of their so-called leaders. Having achieved global lockdown and medical martial law, we will continue to hold hostage your ability to congregate, work, travel, or do just about anything until we're prepared to roll out our bigger plan. I like to call this Pandemic One, because believe me, we have others in the works. Our final solution is to have you begging for us to vaccinate, tag, and digitally track each one of you like livestock. Not only will my foundation enjoy legal immunity and trillions in profits, but these mandatory experimental vaccines will move us so much further down the road to absolute centralized global control. If only my good friend Jeffrey Epstein had been here to celebrate with me aboard the Lolita Express. So remember, global citizens, this will end when I say it ends. Could be a year, maybe two years, maybe never. I guarantee that if we have our way, it will be at least until you're not able to do anything to stop it. Just surrender your personal freedom and common sense to our fear merchants in government and the media, because none of this works unless you all go along with it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to do some augmented reality spirit cooking with Marina Abramovich. Bye now. Hello, useless eater. Uh, you know, I, the funny sorry. thing about that is it's like satirical, obviously, and yet it's factual straight down the line. And, I mean, I imagine Gates listening to this and going, hmm, yeah, I'm on with that. Yeah, hmm, yeah, that's good. Yeah, gosh, this sounds just like me. Yeah, you know, maybe they'll even go a lot. Oh, what the heck? Let's just put this out there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> holy smokes. Where, where not, please send that to me. Please send the link, uh, you know, because that's just too good. Wh- whoever did that, that is a brilliant piece. <laughs> three minutes of, yeah, I mean, three and a half, not, not even four minutes, for heaven's sakes. I just can you put, put that? Can you put I, that? I, I put. put I just up. put it in the uh, the radio chat, and I'm going to drop it right here. Um, to be able to be able to put it together in such a nutshell. So that's that's one reality, Michael. <laughs> that's not yeah. my reality. Okay, my reality is where you go like, wow. That guy is nuts. <laughs> I ain't going to let that happen. No contract yeah. with me in that scenario. You know, and if enough of us, it's like he says, you all have to believe in it. You know, and if right. enough of us don't, it is not going to happen. In fact, poor Mr. Gates is going to find out what we think of him. So, um, is I'm amazed that that's still up on YouTube. I know. You know, um, that, you know... <laughs> Has it been up very long, do you know? I'm not sure how long, but it's been a bit because um, I, I saw it a couple of days ago. So, who knows? Yeah, okay. But I do have it taped in this tape, so I can you know go back and cut it and uh, say, okay, this is yeah. what he said. I'm going to post it on, on my Facebook right this second. Yeah. Um, Bill Gates were to tell the truth. Okay. But that that's that you know, it that that's what they want. That's what they've you know and it gets even more so because we only heard his side of the story. The side of the other story is um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna kill execute 
a man in the streets on and make sure it's videotaped to show the whole right. world to get everybody excited about having you know massive crowds and then we are going to unleash our militia to do just really bad things and um you know take down the police because why do you folk why why did the narrative suddenly start focusing on the police was it because one man we all know that one man did that you know the, the and, yeah. and the, the other cops that were there two two of Two of them had only been on the job for four days, and the other one is his first day. You know, I can't find them, you know, as being evildoers. I think that they were just, w- w- is this is this normal? Yeah, yeah. Is, uh, well, you know, he's the veteran. 19 he, he years he's got. Out. Yeah. They got a little over 19 hours. I mean, you know. I'm going to be some, you know, some smart-ass rookie saying, uh, hey, you know, stop that. You know, to the to the veteran. But this is this is another one of those situations of getting people all upset, and um, so you start to have all of this action happen, and then it disappears. What happened to it? I I believe they were taken out. Um, well, I would love for that to be true. Um, something happened. Something for sure happened. You know. Well, um, okay. There's a there's another another. Um, Okay, again, Ben, but I had already seen it. We would we had already talked about this particular. I've got to go back up here from yesterday. Oh, am I going to be able to find it? I think it's here. Yeah, is this it? I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. It's a um, videotape that shows an electric storm over... Um, no, this isn't it. Over uh, Washington D.C. Have you seen this particular thing? Um, yeah, where there's where there's the lightning bolt that hits the Washington Monument. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, um, that particular situation occurred with a very strange, supposedly lightning strike that was. Nothing like anything I've ever seen, and I live in a place where it's the lightning capital of the world. I've seen lightning like you wouldn't even believe. And why can't I find this? This is making me crazy. Um, I know Walt posted it. Um, All right, I'm not able to pick it up here. But I'll tell you that it was... um, Okay, you have a, a, a straight bolt of lightning that comes down. And then you have this weird cue. It makes a cue. It's like there's two two lines around it that is in the shape of a cue. And it shows up twice in, in this video. And so uh-huh. I, I need to get that video. Because the video that I had... Uh, it it didn't um, I could, it wouldn't work when I went back to it the video wasn't playing but Walt found an, one that was playing I just don't know where he put it um, so I will get that it'll be down in, in the uh, comments under this uh, video but what what was really amazing about it is that Bulford Ben he talked about it too and he said that. This was like a a stamp, like we just got you, we took you out, okay. And mm. if I, if both Walt and I were looking at this thing, and I said, Walt, he says, well, I don't ever remember seeing a straight line like that in, in a, an electric, you know, electric lightning bolt. And I said, oh no, 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 you can have that. I've seen that. I said, what I have never seen is this weird situation that's occurring around it. I said, however, if I was to guess, I would say that this was a plasma beam that caused the air, a hot, 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 hot uh, beam, that caused the air to suddenly pull, expand, and then condense the water vapor to make this this image. I said, it's the only thing I can think of. And it was twice. It showed up in the video just before it starts and then it came back in and I want to make a, a comparison of exactly the 
the image of it because it could make you know was this was this somebody doctoring this um but it would also indicate that um you've got a ground based plasma uh weapon direct direct energy type of thing um on the ground in Washington <laughs> You know, and so it was like last night's show. We got into this, and I'm going like, I gotta get my hands on this video so I can do some analysis. Um, I used to do photographic analysis too. Um, so it, it was, it was. I was like, so Volford, so Volford so is saying that um, this was a, like a, a in your face. We've done this thing. You're done. You're toast because the last effort to take back control was this crazy ass thing we've been living in and the assassination of George Floyd causing this revolt thing so they could have their militia in there and what he said is that they, that a thousand were arrested and he said they were executed I don't think that that would have happened I hope it wouldn't have yeah. happened um, but I do believe that in fact they were taken off the streets but you know again the, the, these weird symbols that you get, you know, through the story makes it even more fascinating. But it also indicates that there is a depth to what's happening that we as the observers and, you know, like crowd participators, <laughs> you know, we're in the crowd. <laughs> um, yeah. We don't know how deep it goes. But right. I, I believe that there are storylines, you know, I mean, I could talk on on the way that timelines shift and reality shift. It's all, and I'm not talking woo-woo, I'm not talking even metaphysics, I'm talking quantum physics. They understand that you cannot have manifestation without thought, period. That's why quantum physics make, physicists make other physicists really nervous, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. It's like Einstein versus Newton, they... Yeah, say, I'm sorry. I'm comfortable with you know, with uh, with the tower of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and the apple falling. Please don't don't give me you know the idea that if enough people think the apple will rise instead of fall, you know. Well, Einstein Einstein didn't get Tesla. You know, Tesla uh, uh, Tesla was the number one quantum physicist in the world. They just never called it quantum physics. He was talking about, you know, if you understand energy, frequency, and vibration, you'll understand how the universe works. Okay, that that's enerology. That is quantum physics. And so, I mean, at Einstein, you know, he said, I don't think God plays dice. Right. Because he didn't understand that behind everything that is 3D is an energy field. It's all energy. 3D is is a manifestation of an energetic field. And our thoughts can influence it because our thoughts are one of the most powerful forces of energy because you can't have manifestation without a thought. You can't have it. it okay, well, well, help me out with this then. So the, the lightning bolt on the Washington Monument and then a Q-shaped interaction of other lightning bolts to form a a light a Q lightning bolt over DC. This is what we're talking about, right? Correct. And that um, the working hypothesis is that this was deliberately created, you know, with a plasma, some kind of plasma energy weapon by you know intelligence operatives, white hat guys on the ground who want a powerful symbol of the natural world you know tell basically telling the bad guys you're toast you know this is like the god zeus is hurling his lightning bolt at you uh in the form of the letter between p and r as as david wilcock is only willing to to name q these days um (laughs) so that's that's what we're talking about what we're well it, it it's am i am i muted can you hear me i hear you okay um it's a couple of things, okay? All right, here's one of them. All right, okay. This is going to show you. This is another version of it. But, all right, this one's even better. Let me just pull this thing up here. So, Oh, wait a minute. i got to go to it. That's right. Okay. Here we go. I want you to see this because it 
really is indicative of a couple of things. It's not it's not a natural phenomenon. I've seen too many, you know, situations of electricity. Let me see where is it, is it gonna show up? Yep, okay. So this does have I'm gonna put this in uh, forgive me for this. This is the way we work. Uh okay. So in the chat room is a link and I'm gonna give it to you right now, Michael. Um, that will take you to the Twitter video of this happening, and there's a couple of things to be aware of when you when you uh, when you look at it. Uh, the cue that is occurring is not a natural bolt of of lightning. It's just it isn't. And th- in this particular vid- video, I'm not sure if it was one or two strikes. Because that's what I was after. It's like, was this that thing manipulated anyway? But that Q could be a plasma weapon. Now, if you want to sort of indicate to the dark side that, you know, you now have a weapon that is going to just, you know, be scarier than any weapon you might have, you might demonstrate it that way. You might say, we just took out all your troops. Because this happened... You know, as in the time frame where these troops, these militia troops, you know, the bad players, um, were being taken out, it might be some kind of a symbol to the deep state, the I don't know, the reptilians, the whoever it is that's the enemy at this point, saying, you know, surrender or or else, because their last ditch effort was to take down using these militia to get everybody all crazy and killing everybody in the streets. That's yeah, what they wanted like to do. The, the Wizard of Oz, the sign in the sky, the Wicked Witch on her broom over the Emerald City spelling out in the sky, Surrender Dorothy. Right, you know? right, right. You know, I don't yeah. know, but I can tell you that my in all of my experience of watching electricity in the lightning capital of the world, when I was working nights for 25 years over the ocean i've seen you know <laughs> lightning storms that are unbelievable i have never seen anything like that q image and the only way i can imagine it is that it was a a, a, a dw pulse but a plasma pulse okay well i'm you know i've, I've looked at it a few times now and the first few seconds you get standard lightning and then all of a sudden you get what looks like sort of a hook-shaped, much brighter bolt, sustained bolt, hits the Washington Monument once, and it's off half a second, and then it pulses again and repeats in exactly the same uh, shape. It's, it's basically the same bolt, only it seems well, to it's have just, two it, it just keeps going around. It's just looping. Okay, what you need to look at is towards the right of the screen and see the cue. See the flash. Jeez, uh, I wish I could get a still photo of this. I know they're out there. Uh, oh, okay, I, I, I'm going to have to go back here and see if I can... Because you're missing the cue. All right, well, I'm, you know, what I see is there's, there's th- three or four vertical strikes and then there's the Washington Monument strike. <laughs> and you don't, I mean, the cue... I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing a cue. I know you're not, and I don't understand why, because some people see it right off the bat and they get focused on it, but I've seen some very uh, knowledgeable people who don't even see it. All right, I'm going to, I've got, um, now I'm taking a still photograph of what you're looking for. Uh, Okay, I'm copying that. I'm not sure if I can drop it directly into chat or not, but let's just see. Okay. Did that work or not? Uh, (laughs) Here's somebody commenting on the Twitter thread you shared. Somebody called Beverly Rising says, On the one hand, breathtakingly beautiful. On the other, I think this means we're supposed to throw someone into the nearest active volcano. If so, I have some ideas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. lordy. Oh, yeah, Joe versus the volcano. Or, uh... 
Uh, yeah. Yes, we've, we realize, Mr. Gates, that the way to save the world is for you to jump into an active volcano. Thank you for your contribution to humanity. Yeah, something like that. Oh, for crying out loud, I don't know what in the heck is happening here. Let me just go back here. I'm sorry, people, but this is kind of like really what you want to see. And I'm going to do this. Copy image. All right, I've copied the image. I am so boring today here. Sorry. 5G now. Paste. All right. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there, Michael. I swear we're getting there. Yeah, all right. <laughs> we're getting there. Uh, la, la, do I need da, to da, tell da, a goofy joke or something while we're doing what? this? Do what? Do I need to tell a goofy joke or something to cover? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Do a tap dance, darling. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see, from my father's store of uh, goofy jokes. Okay, this is a Navy joke. It's going to take about 45 seconds. Do you need that much time? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So... The U.S. Navy famously founded by John Paul Jones. It's the Revolutionary War, the famous battle between the Bonhomme Richard, the American frigate, and the British frigate, the Serapis. Their ships are lined up to each other, cannons are going, and their masts are falling, and the British commander calls out to John Paul Jones, Do you surrender? And John Paul Jones issues his famous clarion call. As he shouts out, he says, I have not yet begun to fight. Well, away up in the crow's nest of the Bonhomme Richard, there's an old salt, a sailor in the crow's nest at the top of the mast. And he hears this cry from down below on the decks. I have not yet begun to fight. Shakes his head, says to himself, there's always some dumb son of a bitch who doesn't get the word. <laughs> <laughs> And then my dad would laugh and laugh and laugh. And forgive me for the colorful language, but hey, it's a military joke. Are we good? Yes, we've got it in chat now, and it's also in the uh, uh, Skype messaging. If you just click on that link I just gave you, you're going to see it. Okay. Oh, okay. That's what oh, we're hey. talking about. Now, if you if you see that image and get it in your head... You know, is this something that's coming from below and hitting the ground? You would, would, you know, think that maybe somebody on the ground would say, ouch. Or is this a weapon that is firing up? And because it's, it's actually creating a tremendous amount of heat, it's causing the water molecules to essentially move out of the way and con condense so that it looks like a cloud around it. Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. You see it okay. now? Okay, that's what yeah, we're t that's what we're that's what we're talking about, um, and like I say, I have never seen an electric storm where an image anywhere near this is there. And the first video I saw, it did, and I kept saying to people because I'm I'm playing it over and over again. I'm going like, is there two in here or is this repeating? And I was on live radio when somebody showed us this uh, this link, and. Um, so I said, i got to look at this again. But now, having seen the one I just saw, it only shows it happening once. Um, but still, it's a pretty impressive boom. You know, the timing, you have to watch timing, too. Why is why would you have this kind of a situation? Do I think it's man-made? Yeah. I don't think it's a natural phenomenon. And I, I do. I mean, if I, if looking at that, I'm going like, my God, you've got that kind of a weapon? Well... I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I'm, I, I, I tend to fall a little bit on the skeptical side with it because I think, I've noticed. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's like, okay, so to generate that, to count on it going viral, to count on it being seen, it's a split second image. It, you know, the technology required to put that in place, the, the, you know, the energy, the people, the technology, the timing, will it go viral? You know, when I think about. Oh, the strategic allocation of resources to try to create this momentary lightning thing that kind of looks like a cue. I don't know. I just, you know, uh, 
you know more about this kind of thing than I do. You probably know more, more about lightning than I do. Um, you know, but the bottom line is you go back to the story and the awakening and consciousness, right? This is going viral. People are looking at this. This is, you know, the universe, call it what you will, this is part of the story, you know, and it's a powerful thing. It's it's a freaking lightning bolt, for crying out loud, over the nation's capital. Um, so I don't pretend to have sufficient expertise to be able to say one way or the other. Um, you know, it, it's a daunting proposal in my mind. Yeah, well, the thing, the, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because it came into my mind. And because it's, it indicates that the, what we're involved in is not just a 3D battle. It, it's layers of 3D. Who knows who all the players are? But I also believe there is a very spiritual movement, imprint, awakening, awareness, whatever you want to call it, that's involved in all of this. Why do they still have the churches shut down when they got people walking in the in the streets? You know, yeah. you, you can go. You can go. Then this was this was pretty creepy to me. Um, you can go and be in in this peaceful march, and then somebody gets up that this is what they're filming. You may not have seen it. I didn't. I was told this, um, but they got people up there that suddenly will start talking about whatever and tell them to get down on their knees and all these people get down on their knees and start reciting whatever it is these people are reciting recite oh is this is this spiritual religious gathering no, or is this it, no oh, it's it, it's you know, you know uh black lives matter uh i don't know what i don't want to even say it because i didn't hear it but they were saying yes it's almost like you know they're trying to 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 well, you know Nancy Pelosi and about a dozen or more of her cronies there, they put on a scarf that I I forget what it is. I think it's a, I, I don't know what kind of a scarf it is, but it's a religious scarf used in ceremonies. And they got down on their one knee for nine minutes to, you know, respect uh, Mr. Floyd. And, you know, the people who actually are responsible for this kind of a, of a of a shawl went berserk. We don't want you taking our shawls. It's a, it's a religious thing, but they all got Uh-oh. it on, and you know it's like you Is see that a thing? like say, a prayer shawl. Yeah, a prayer shawl, and I'm not sure w- what it is. Somebody told me, and I've already forgotten it um, because I wasn't familiar with the group that they were talking about. But this kind of obscure or you know not so well known prayer group have a shawl that a dozen or so Democrats put on and they in a in a in a big room, you know, and they all got down on one knee and um and stayed there for nine minutes and I, I that is not a good idea. Michael, I would have rolled over before I could have done that. <laughs> and Nancy Pelosi needed yeah. help getting up, you know, I mean that nine minutes is a long time to be on a knee. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm imagining it right now, and I'm already feeling uncomfortable. I know. <laughs> uh, you know, okay, well, we're we're in our last five minutes here, and I <clears throat> something's come up for me I just want to share. So, you know, we're talking about the Q lightning bolt, the, you know, and, and the power of the image and the awakening of consciousness and, you know, okay, what happens at a pivotal moment that, you know, that, that uh, people latch on to and say, okay, uh, this is divine in origin. Uh, this is spirit in action. And this happens at a, at a key moment where it, it tips the balance of consciousness. It tips the belief. And I'm going to go back to Joan of Arc for a second here because there's, there's a moment like that with a natural phenomenon in that story. So, you know... She comes to Shinal, she gets the Dauphin to sign on, and he, he, she tells him a secret prayer that he has spoken only to God, asking for uh, a truth to be told him about who he really is and his parentage. She knows this, she tells him, she gets the army, she goes to Orléans to relieve the siege. The British, the, the English are uh, besieging Orléans, starving the people. And she comes with her army, and she is led down the wrong side of the river by the military commanders. And she sees this, and this 17-year-old girl is really angry. 
and she comes to the Duke, uh, the, the Bastard of Orléans, as he is called, you know, a high French aristocrat who is commanding the forces. And she, she says, and this conversation took place in 1429 AD, but it's absolutely recorded under oath from multiple witnesses. And she comes to him and she says, and he was called the Bastard of Orléans, not because he was a bastard, but because he was illegitimate. And that's how they knew that was his name, right? And she says, are you the Bastard of Orléans? He says, yes. She says, did you direct that I be brought down the wrong side of the river when the English, whom God has commanded me to assault and destroy, are on the other side? And he says, well, yes, uh, yes, lady, because you see, we understand how these things are. And says, and it's because the wind is in the wrong direction for us to be able to relieve the starving people. And so we really thought it better that you be brought on this side of the river rather than the other side. And she says, the English are on the other side. Are they not? She says, yes. She says, so now I will need a change in the wind to be able to actually fulfill the mission that God has given me. And this is thanks to you. And he said, well, let there be the change in the wind then, mon général. And in that moment, the wind which had been contrary for days shifted in that moment so that they could put their people in the river, cross the river, relieve the people. And the bastard of Orléans later testified in the rehabilitation of Joan to restore her to her true um, glorious story, said that moment the wind changed and I believed in her from there on. So it's these little things, a lightning bolt in the shape of a cue. I mean, <laughs> what do you do with that? Uh, you know, you've got Kerry Cassidy coming on in the last couple of days saying insider stories, absolute, I absolutely believe, you know, JFK Jr. is alive, Q is, is real, Trump's going to announce him as his running mate, we're going to see a huge shift before the end of July. I don't know, that would all be lovely if it's true. And you get a cute lightning bolt. What are we gonna What are we gonna do with that? Uh, well, if it's a shift, if it represents a kind of you know sign that people are gonna interpret as being semi divine, or maybe it's an energy bolt from the ground by white hats who want to give people a sign. I don't know, but there I don't it is. know either. But isn't it interesting? I mean, the, you know, I, lo sure I love is. these stories. I'm a storyteller. I love these kind of stories. And uh, so you're saying that uh, Kerry is actually confirming the JFK um, going to replace Pence scenario? Oh, yeah. She she just within the last couple of days. Uh, oh, I'm glad she Alenti got on board. Gave, gave she just, you know, <laughs> she just flat out said, this is my information from sources I trust. And she she's had vivid dreams, she says, with JFK Jr. And she's had insider confirmation. And so, yeah, she's totally on board with it. Well, um, we've been on board with it for the last good year or with that. Because last July, um, there was a uh, indication that this change, that J we knew by then, by last July, that from the year before, that JFK Jr. was alive. Um, I did radio shows on it and told you why I thought that. Um, Cosmic Reality, radio. That was the best shows on that. Um, so we knew, and then they get to, to just the same time frame we're in now, and they're talking about the the fireworks at Mount, Mount Rushmore, and you know that JFK is going to well, Vincent Fuchsia will be uh, introduced as JFK Jr. and will replace Pence as the running mate. All of that, you know, came out like I say this time last year. Well, then it didn't happen. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But but now we know that Q will post something that is not going to be this July. I mean, he wasn't specific as to what July. Uh -huh. Right. And but now all of a sudden it's raised its head because of um, a medium who's talking to people on the other side and she's so accurate apparently that they keep taking her down from YouTube. Can you imagine somebody saying I talked to the dead people and uh, JFK Jr. is not there. He's alive. You know? Um, and they take her down off of YouTube uh, multiple times. She I was know. It's getting ridiculous. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's nuts. But anyway, that raised this, the, the question again because she said that she saw this happening. And then 
um, you know, maybe she had known the same things we do. I don't know whether she's accurate or not, but that that's how it started up again. And because uh, as soon as I heard it, I checked to see if there was going to be a fireworks thingy happening at Rushmore last year. And no, there wasn't anything scheduled. So at the time, I said, well, nothing's right. scheduled. You know, how are they going to pull this off? But this year, they do have it scheduled. So who knows? But we're going to know yeah. very shortly something. Yeah, we are. And this is the thing about predictions. I'd much rather hear news of stuff that's happened than announcements of stuff that somebody says might, and there's this prophecy, and there's this prediction. We'll see. I know. I get the awakening part, the whole Q thing. And the predictions and like, you know, Carrie coming out with this, preparing mass consciousness. I get that, too. I see we're past our time. Should we wrap it up, Nancy? Yep, we got to go. Okay, well, this has been Radio 5G, which is a joint project of Cosmic Reality Radio and the Sacred Academy of Global Evolution. This is Michael Henry Dunn with my esteemed co-host, Nancy Hopkins, signing off. We'll see you next week, folks. God bless us, everyone. Bye for now. Be safe, everybody. Thank you for listening. May it be. Let it be.